Hello, everybody. Proxy Table Gaming PTG is here once again with another battle report. Lucky Sixes and Hyper G showing you how we play. Watch ya. All right. How's it going? Hmm. Good. Good. We are in Art of War mode still, which is great. Yes. I love mm. going back over Art of War. It's the best tournament uh, each year. So. Best tournament. It is. It is. Um. It's only and it's only bettered by the previous one and the next one well, wrap your head around that that's, that's <laughs> some inception kind of talk <laughs> yeah. that is I know, um, I know. this ah. is a tournament within a tournament within a tournament <laughs> I um i like it. we need to go deeper and we're going deeper in <laughs> we are. Uh, to we're round two goblins. we've already <laughs> done a round two but have we because this is round uh -huh. two. Oh, it is um Still. and orcs and goblins with yourself <laughs> Hyper G yes. against uh -huh. Infernal Doors, Marcin. Marcin, and he has a score to settle against moi um, because we fought at March for Victory uh, last yeah. year when uh, we were in the team tournament. We faced each other then. He was Infernal Dwarfs. I was Saurian Ancients. So similar to the thing with Kluzi, actually, to be honest. Uh, yes. The rematch, um, but I was Saurians then. What can I do with Orcs instead? Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to see how this one goes because Marcin's a top, top fella, like He's top good. fella, like yeah. everyone in Ninth Age is awesome. But you know, if there was a level of awesome, Marcin is there definitely a, at the yeah, top. Yeah, so, levels. Yes, exactly. We should do um, that. You, we should, we should do that. People. Publish it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is our elite level. Yeah, trash <laughs> level. <laughs> trash Sorry, level Craig. top gents. <laughs> Ooh. Open shot there. Uh, he won't see it. Um, so, <laughs> you know my Orc and Goblin list. Um, take a few moments to pause and remember what I told you about it previously, because I'm not telling you again. Um, well, I kind of will. It's Gromgore and Fellas um, is the easiest way of putting it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just um, check it out and um, see what happens in this report to come. And we'll put all our efforts into Martin's in Martin? Martin's Infernals. Martin. Are we? Burn. Oh, yeah. Um, Speaking tell of you what, Burn. Burn is, is definitely the opposite uh, word with Infernals. Or so, so they often get thought of. But, um, and, and I obviously do have Fortitude in, in my troll unit. So I have got to be a little bit wary of the after Burn or the during Burn. <laughs> Back to the Inception <laughs> crap. Um, but let's go through it. What has he got? He's got a Prophet, General Prophet of Asherak. On a seat of authority, that's the one that like hides within a big unit of dwarfs, um, effectively, um, because he's paired up with the Infernal Bastion and uh, the Infernal... Uh, which unit was it? The Citadel Guard. They're in with mm. the Citadel Guard. No, the Infernal Warriors. Get it right. Get it right. They're in with the Infernal Warriors. Yes. So that basically means that the seat of authority chap can basically hide in the back um, because there's no room for him in that unit. And mm -hmm. all the blunderbusses can still fire from the Infernal Bastion, which is just get your head around. It's just insane, um, but it's 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 the way to do it. So it's really cool. Uh, that was Masters on Occultism with Magical Heirlooms. So we've got a decent amount of spells. Uh, the Vizier or Vizier or Vizier, however you want to say it. Vizier. Vizier is uh, Willis Ward uh, BSB Legion Standard. So that unit has got two Legion Standards. So not only are they um, Rocking out everything I've just said, but they're also a very good static combat res. Uh, also with a blunderbuss himself. Uh, Flame of the East Spear. I can't remember what that does. Um, suggests flaming attacks somewhere. Um, and he's also got Breath of the Brass Ball, which I think is the um, uh, the, the metal shifting attack thing that Infernals have. Mm. Um, the AP-10 one. Um, he can it can't be too well. good, because he's got Legion Standard's 10 points, Willis Ward 15. I, mean, I suppose it could be it could be like a big 75 yeah. point spear. Yeah, I think the breath, no, I don't think it is. Uh, but the breath of the basketball was pretty cool. Um, you know, getting whatever the the AP 10 thing is. That's yeah. pretty nice. Um, yeah, and they're with the Citadel Guard. I uh, know they're not with the Citadel Guard, they're with the Infernal Warriors of the Nega. Uh, the Citadel Guard are a different unit. They've got pistols and spears, uh, flaming standards. So there's your flaming again. So watch out, trolls, again. Um, definitely pick your battles in this one. Uh, two units of shackled slaves with paired weapons. They're very much just the chaff. Um, the march and they damage themselves chaff, mm. which is just hilarious. Um, 
Uh, it's effectively them gone. running away, right? Is <laughs> well, yeah. It, they're marching, and then you can't. You know, when you're like sh- herding sheep. I do it often. Yes, mm. I mean, you know, is this the farming hour again? Or <laughs> well, we need to start that. Um, yeah, disciples of Luger, twenty-four of them. That's a pretty beefy unit. Um, they don't have a lot of armor, um, but they can definitely give out the pain, mm. um, especially for paired weapons. Uh, three Torok anointed um, paired weapons again. They're rocking my. I think it's, is it five attacks each or something like that. Um, a very decent unit of that. Uh, already mentioned the Bastion. Um, then you've got a gunnery team nap for thrower. Uh, which sits in the get it right this time the citadel guard, um, so that's that's really cool as well. Um, that's a flamethrower, um, which adds to the uh, pistol shots quite nicely. Um, and then the and then two Kadim Titans, um, yeah, both walking volcanoes, one with a rocket battery and one with a natural thrower. Yeah, man. I mean, the reason me and Martin kind of have a bit of history or a bit of a reason to grudge each other up, not that this was official grudge. Um, was that um, in the last battle that we played, I did a Fate's Judgment on one of his Kadeem Titans when he only had one Kadeem Titan and did six wounds to it with a Fate's Judgment. And that affected so, him so much, he brought another one. Yes, exactly. So, in every battle since. So yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, there I'm go. definitely to blame for doubling up on the Titans. Uh, Frontline Clash, Asterix and Spoils of War, Asterix. Which, because, of course... as you remember... Yes. We, we went into it slightly with the, in the, the last battle, but mm. basically it's spoils of war, move your spoils, and the closest to the, the opponent's board edge wins. Yeah, the spoils are basically bombs instead of treasure, and you're taking them into the enemy camp, is the way that this the story is uh, is written mm. out there, but yeah, uh, definitely have a read of that storyline thing, because it is going through the yeah. whole tournament. And we'll put, we'll really put all these nice. up, so that there's a chance for you to read all of them as we go. Yeah. Um, but here we are in the deployment phase Mm. It was quite a nice picture as well. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I did. I excelled myself um, randomly uh, by luck. Um, so yeah, looking at the um, the deployment from my side, got my five dice piles out. You'd be pleased with that. Um, I've got the uh, two wrecking teams on the left hand side, which was quite a um, nifty little plan. They were going to go straight for the disciples. Um, I'll get to them in a minute. Um, I've got the ten feral marauders. Uh, then I've got the Iron Orc Chariot. Then I've got my big unit of Veteran Orc Marauders with uh, Gromgor. Um, then I've got the Veteran Orcs with the um, Shaman. Uh, the Chariots with the um, Goblin Witch. Uh, then the Feral Orc on foot. And then the Trolls with the um, uh, Pet Monster chap in mm. there. So I've filled out the whole line, really. Um, yes. You know? Pretty cool, but I've got a good mix of scoring units going on, so I've got threats everywhere. Is the way I was playing that because um, yeah, it's so many units, it's scoring. so good. Yeah, mm, yeah. And then facing off against me, um, the smaller army, but definitely no less fearsome. Uh, the big unit of disciples, uh, Luger disciples, are opposite my wrecking teams, mm. and I was absolutely going straight for them. Um, then I've got the two Kadeem Titans. Are oh, such beautiful models, Marcin's done with these things. The whole army, to be fair. Mm. Um, he he insisted it was a work in progress, but they look awesome already, um, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, then he had a unit of Shackled Slaves. Uh, then there was the Bastion unit. Then the Citadel Guard. Um, and then another Slave unit. And then in the forest is the Anointed. Is that right, Kadeem? No. Three Anointed. Yeah, Incarnates. Or one or the other. Yeah. Maybe they're all the same thing. I don't know. You know what you need, I'm talking about. Yeah. Let's go. Um, yeah, I went um, bird's eye view with this one. Um, Marcin moves up, gets first turn, um, doesn't move massively aggressively. Um, that is a hill in the middle, which um, was shielding me somewhat from a lot of his shooting, um, which was kind of my plan, at least in uh, in the early days. Pick pick what went over the hill, because I was going to get shot to um, at some point. if I Which is one of the... the hill. ID gods, I think. Yes, uh, exactly. I pronounced it exactly right. I've been practicing. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and that was uh, Marcin's first turn movement, effectively. Not not much to it. And um, I responded in kind because I wanted a fight too. Um, I I think I stay behind the hill with my veterans, but 
the next turn picture will likely reveal whether that's true or not. Um, because, yeah, poking up above the hill could... Doesn't be... look like you're on it. it. It does or it doesn't. It does, but that could be the it camera does. angle. I'm, I'm thinking maybe I do, because I think I've got a plan to boost the resilience of my unit, which I might show in a bit. But either way, this is pretty much an aggressive advance forward. Um, including yeah. the trolls. The trolls went running straight for his um, incarnate unit, um, if, if that's what they are. <laughs> so, um, the uh, wrecking teams both moved up a decent whack. Um, I got lightning run braces off for a Hand of Heaven spell and did a wound to the... Those, that, yeah, I think Martin's counting down. Um, so just sure, a anointed, yeah. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, that's what they are. Uh, so not incarnates in any way. <laughs> Um, and in response, this was um, magic. I think this is a. Is it Graves calls on occultism? It is. Yeah, um, sure. yeah, yeah. So he didn't have a picture, but he didn't move up too much, apart from the slaves. No. Yes, um, the slaves go gung ho in their their chapping maneuvers. Um, it doesn't look breakable? like I lost. No. Uh, well, they they crumble. Um, okay, and then. Super. So not super yeah. or the other one. Unstable. Unstable, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It doesn't look like I took any wounds on the orcs, which suggests I was behind the hill um, and out of range of the shooting. Um, from. Uh, oh, no, actually, that would be coming this up. Could be this could be shooting. Magic. Yeah. yeah, this shooting's coming. So I lost three um, to Grave Balls, which is pretty lucky, I think. Um, and then a bunch to shoot. Him. Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. But you can see the spells that I've got on myself. I've got Awaken the Beast for an extra resilience. So I was Toughness yeah. 5. I was Res 5. Um, yeah, which, which is why even, I didn't lose as many. Yeah. yeah. So that, that was the only reason that I was um, prepared to go on the hill, I think. Um, so yeah, there is that. Um, Back onto your turn. Yeah. You do a charge? Can I do flees? a charge. Um, he flees with both the slaves and the um, Torok anointed. Um, I was a bit disappointed. I, I really thought the trolls could absolutely go to town on this flank because I didn't think there was much over there that could really stop them. Um, well, clearly, so did Marcy. <laughs> it, it was the right move. It was absolutely the right move because I think the trolls would have absolutely gone mental. Um, so yes, it was, it was good good for him to do that. And I think I I, I might have charged double one, so I only moved okay. one forward. So I yeah, even yeah, lost sure. quite a lot of ground over there as well, uh, unfortunately. Um, I decided to charge in the Iron Orc Chariot um, because it had taken two wounds from one of the Kadeem Titans in shooting. Um, and I didn't feel that it was going to be safe if I kept it out of combat. Um, however, I decided not to charge the Baron Orc Marauders in because A, it's overkill, and B, there was a whole lot that could countercharge them afterwards. Yeah, sure. And we all know what happens to me when I get a bit too crazy with my Baron Orc Marauders in the early game. It never ends up well. <laughs> so with the Clusey and the Touch on Turner battles directly behind me, I only charge the Iron Oak Chariot. Be patient. <laughs> it's gross. It's gross. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this was a shame. Um, I, I mean, I do a wound to a Kadeem Titan with a Wrecking Team. That's the good news. The bad news is he rolled a really long way, which meant I hit the Titan. What I was sure. actually trying to do was get just towards the Titan so that I had a wrecking team on each side of his disciples, effectively keeping the disciples of Luger out of the game. Because I didn't want to go into him, because it's only 2d6 hits if I go into him. I wanted to keep them back out of the game and mm. not going through my units, because 6d6 strength 6 hits would have decimated those Lugers. Yeah. Whereas... Because I ended up rolling quite high with this guy and going into a Kadeem Titan, doing one wound. Now I only got one wrecking team, which was not quite the threat that I really wanted over there. Sure, yeah. But I just rolled too high. So, you know, don't don't say that with disappointment too often, do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then your other one goes up to it. My other one, I you know, the direction of him was never going to hit the Titan, uh, but it is very much a threat to those Lugas, keeping them back. Um, and I think I'm doing this like fairly off, obviously. So Martin knows I'm not going to try and run into him to get 2d6. Yeah. But he can't risk going too far up, um, etc. Um, and so I also use the Relentless Banner 
on the Ferrolocks infantry to get them running quite aggressively towards mm. Martin's line. Um, I was I was okay with him potentially charging his pistol guys into the front of the ferals um, because I wanted to open up that side of things so that he didn't have four strong units in the middle. I wanted him to send one unit over to this side so that I could like do some killing and reduce his numbers because the yeah. feral orcs are never meant to survive anything. They're just there to um, you know cause some damage, and they had um, picked up. Um, but they they kind of. They've the just gone on it now. They've just gone on it, yeah. Because I think the spoils were a bit closer together than normal spoils, weren't they? In this, um, possibly. Yeah. So, yeah. And on to combat. Other than that, yeah. Other than that, it was just uh, as usual. Um, combat wise, well, this was this was just a bit silly, really. Um, he only had six attacks with his slaves. Does a wound to an iron up chariot. Nice. A lot of things have struggled to wound an iron chariot. But not, I know, shackles yeah. slaves. not shackles um, slaves. Not shackles it's the shackles, slaves. I mean, mate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Clearly. Um, I mean, oh, no, technically he had paired weapons, actually. So I think he was nine attacks. But still, it's pretty decent. Um, I think he was hitting on, well, I think he might have been hitting on fives. So I'm like weapon skill pretty high. But anyway, he was definitely wounding on sixes, I think. So, um, yeah, it was it was a bit red. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he crumbles a bit, and I'm, I'm actually stuck with the Iron Orc Chariot, which is... It, I mean, it keeps my Iron Orc Chariot alive, but I've only got mm. one wound on my Iron Orc Chariot now. So, yeah. you know, there's actually a chance the slaves kill him, which is not part of the plan. Um, What did I do? Did I do a spell or something? No, this is him? Marcin's turn, and I think he's moved into the Wrecking Team. Yes, yes he has indeed. He took one for the Lugas. Um, and moved into the wrecking team, took 3d6 hit and took four wounds. And so that yeah. actually, as much as, I mean, I've got to be delighted with doing four wounds to a tight. Because that's yeah. amazing. I am delighted. Um, but it does mean now that scoring Luga unit are now completely free to romp up that flank. Mm. Uh, the only thing I can really be glad about is I've wasted three of their turns in order to, yeah. you know, they're not already on top of me, really. All I've got over there is feral marauders, and they're not going to hold back a unit of losers. So, yeah. Um, over here, he sort of does a little bit of a readdress the lines, really. Doesn't take the bait of the feral orcs um, as much as I would have liked him to. Um, and he just sort of like just uh, redresses his line in the middle. Um, and uh, he has got a lot of shooting, so he's hoping to very much whittle me down with that. Yeah. Um, over here, what are we looking at? Mm. Well, this is the other side of the, the movement because mm. he's got his Lugas yeah. coming up. There is a 655 in the middle. I don't know whether that means anything. I don't think so. Clearly not. You would have known. Um, on to yeah. a shooting. <laughs> <laughs> or occultism. Yeah. yeah, occultism comes at me again. Um, I seem to think that this is one of those situations. It might even be Breath of Corruption. I can't remember whether it's Breath of Corruption or Grave Calls because they're both in occultism, aren't they? Um, but this might be one of those situations where Marcin rolled a double six for the number of hits. So that could be the case with either Breath of Corruption or Grave Calls. But he definitely rolled a really high number and then rolled terribly to wound. <laughs> um, so it was one of those, oh, my hopes are really up high. Oh, they're really The down. dice gods giveth. The they give dice us, gods they take away. Taketh away. Exactly. Uh, and so, speaking of taking away, yeah. his shooting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's also flicked one of his magic cards to randomly land in my feral orcs. So that was a pretty nifty Jonathan Creek move. Mm. Um, but um, they caught it nicely. I don't know what spell it is. It can't have been that important. <laughs> I mean, one of the reasons he didn't charge as well is behind that unit. I had wheel turns on them. So, yeah. you know, that, that was a big difference. Um, but yes, a few feral orcs meet their end. But speaking of meeting their end, I know Chariot goes down. That was not in the script to a unit of wow. shackled slaves. That is now still alive. I mean, yeah, incredible. That was not supposed to happen, um, but that's what you can do if you roll a few good dice. And uh, yeah, now I've got to deal with those slaves because there's still six alive. Yeah. Oh, nightmare. Um, yeah. So, hmm. um, so I decided to go back to plan minus one A, which is just charge, um, which is kind of what orcs should be doing anyway. Um, I don't know if I hit the war cry or not. I don't think I did. I um, don't think so. 
It's um, a decent charge, and, if not, on those other yeah, slaves. Exactly. So maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Um, I, I mean, I'll spoil it. I got in, so there's that. Um, you did. So, you know. But this was where... Well, hang on, go back a bit. Go back a bit. <laughs> because we had a discussion in Marcin about the fact that my feral orcs had one of the spoils, the bombs. Mm-hmm. The Lugas on the other side were a little bit away from the bomb, and they only had three turns left to get it and move it. And technically, my veteran orcs were having a bit of a standoff in the middle with my marauders there as well, and my chariots. So that spoil was very much unaccounted for, as was the Lugas one. My ferals had this one. Technically, by claiming that spoil, if I move backwards towards my own deployment zone, I was still the only one with a spoil. And by default, I was closest to my enemy's deployment zone, yes. even though I was closest to my deployment zone. Yeah. And I would have won objective. And I was like, that would be really, like, really breaking the rules of the scenario if I ended up yeah, on my own board edge. Yeah. But no one else has a spoil. Yeah, yeah, um, it is. There's I, I, I genuinely thought about just not, let, not making it so that he couldn't claim the other spoils and my ferals would just run away with a bomb. And win yeah. the objective, but that isn't really the old way to play. So I charged. So you charged, <laughs> and you got it. Yeah, I got it. So, so all is well in the world of Orkdom. Um, yeah, I mean, he would have, <laughs> he would have got that other. He's got three turns left, right? The Luger has three turns. Yeah, left. Yeah, so, so go on it, are. claim it, move mm. two turns of moving because you're not ca- touching yeah. it. Really, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and th- once he'd picked it up. There isn't much chance that I can get it off of him with those yeah. leaders. So yeah, I think that's why I came to this conclusion. It was the right conclusion to make, sort of thing, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was just an interesting discussion, really, in terms of this scenario. Uh, into my turn three, I move my marauders onto the hill. They are on the hill. They can see stuff over the top of that. Uh, my chariots are still hanging back because you know they need to support at the right time. I marched my trolls uh, into the face of the Turok Anointed. And I also brought my neophytes on um, with their ambushing um, to to do that. Obviously, this scenario wasn't great for the neophytes because they had to come in from a board edge, so they couldn't claim an objective and run it to the board edge. Um, they were just too far away to get there, but they're still a useful unit to come on. Uh, and my maraud- my veteran orcs are the ones that decide to finish off the slaves because they're annoying. <laughs> Surely I can't lose a whole other unit. Um, you think? Um, yeah. Over here, I kill these slaves, um, and I got um, Savage Fury and Awaken the Beast off. Um, I think I got Resilience again, which is pretty cool for those ferals. Mm. So they're, they're not as easy to kill as they normally would be. Um, and yeah, that means I can go on a bit of a rampage, really. Slaves uh, finally die. Slaves finally die. So in this turn, I kill both units of slaves. Get me. Um, and um, yeah, I think it's just a matter of seeing what Marcin wants to do about it now. Because I have actually got a spoil quite near his deployment there, zone, but it is on a unit that is renowned for not surviving a battle. So yeah. <laughs> you know there is that as well. Um, see what he wants to do about it. Yep. And what does he do about it? Oh. Oh, yes, what he does is he charges the veteran the veteran orcs. Uh, yes, with the Kadeem Titan, uh, which means that I flee uh, because I don't fancy that fight. Um, he has that, that, that Kadeem Titan hasn't got many uh, wounds um, left, but I didn't feel that I needed to get double charged by holding, basically. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to flee in that direction so that I was still in... A useful zone, if that makes sense, or, or say general, for example, yeah. uh, near my general, yeah. So, um, so I felt that fleeing was the uh, better part of valor there. Um, and he moves his infernal bastion unit up onto the hill onto the spoil, so they have also decided to make a claim for it as well. Um, and he he does his um, um, usual occultism stuff to kill a couple more veteran orc marauders. Has he has he well. charged to sit little guard into your? Ferals there. Yes. Yes, he has. Um, he couldn't 
um, close the door with much because I was so close. Yeah. Um, but yes, he has indeed gone for it. Um, so yeah, I, mean, I, I was, you know, res five. So I was thinking, all right, I can hopefully hold out a bit there. Um, yeah. But yeah, we will see. Kills a couple more veteran marauders. I mean, they are very much doing their role of delivering Gromgor in this one because mm. they're just dying to magic slowly. But yeah. like I said, and then got pretty unlucky <laughs> with his with his dice rolls, and yeah. that is that is kind of a, a sway of the whole battle because even though he does kill a fair few with this follow up spell, Marson's dice have not been great this battle so mm. far, and he hasn't even really started rolling. Like the reason why he's done a few wounds with shooting is because he hasn't really rolled that well, um, and um, yeah, I was quite lucky to have this many veteran marauders at this point. I think. But Gromgor will see what he's got left to give. Now he's only got two buddies with him. Yeah, this is like at the end of the turn, so you kind of both held and then you reformed mm. with the Ferals. Yeah, both reformed, so you actually get the fight on second time round. Yeah. Um, yes. So yeah, not not a lot died in that fight in the first time round. I think his uh, combat res meant it was actually a little bit scary for me, um, but um, I held. Mm. So it was all good. I think I was just in my BSB range, which is quite important for that. Um, if I needed a reroll, can't remember. Sure. Uh, and so I decide to do this because Gromgor is only going to lose his unit if he doesn't go into combat now, um, effectively. And obviously, I was too close for a stun and shoot or anything like that. I mean, I think with the shooting, I was like quite like impressed with blunderbusses being strength five. Like I know they don't hit. They're well, really good. Maybe three. Really right, powerful. Well. Yeah. 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 Exactly, they could go through your units. Um, and I decided to start chipping away at this unit of um, Infernal Guard. I always forget which is which, Infernals and <laughs> Citadel Guard, but yeah, whichever unit has the Bastion. Because um, they haven't got many attacks coming back on, because there's not much no. in the front rank and not many on the Bastion. So I felt that I was better off in combat rather than sucking up Blunderbuss shots. Um, yeah. And um, the impact hits can obviously help out with that. Um, yeah, so I, I go for it in that regard. I believe my Veteranauts will rally as well in this turn. We'll see them in a minute. Uh, Trolls declare the charge, which is now unfailable, obviously, which is great. And I, I do suspect that I'll, I'll go through them. Obviously, from my perspective, it's like four turns too late because I could have really done something good with the Trolls. Um, uh, in the middle, I only managed to contact with two chariots because I have to get everything in, which is a shame, but legal. <laughs> the way it should be. Um, you can see that his Lugers, um, I don't think they moved up a lot because they've still got enough time to get the objective. Um, I think he was kind of relying on the fact that my veteran Alt Marauders were going to be too dead to claim an objective um, in the middle. And my Feral Orcs probably weren't going to survive against the now fully reformed yeah. Citadel Guard. But they, he certainly wasn't in a, much of a rush with those Lugers. I think he did fear the Feral Marauders a little bit more than he needed to on that side. Plenty of time for those Lugers to pick up that objective and probably win it if the Ferals go down. Um, this is a whole load of dice. Um, at the time, I definitely would have remembered exactly what all of these dice were telling you about. But I can see that there's a lot of ones and twos. And I can also see that it's not my dice. Yes. Now... I just need to now figure out what context this was in. Because <laughs> I, I, I suspect it's to do with the Ferals versus the Citadel Guard combat. It does look um, like that because he's got some, he's yeah. taken some wounds himself. Exactly. Um, so I think this is like. Could it be armor? Because um, you're now AP naught? Yes, it could be armor because he has three up armor on his unit. So yes, I think this is how many. Has he got six casualties? Seven. No, he's got seven there. Uh, no, seven, seven dice. I mean, either way, if you roll that many dice and you're rolling that yeah. many ones and twos, you're still pretty fast. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I think this is a demonstration of the things not going overly well in that direction, um, basically. Um, and that's the wounds that I took in return, which is not very many. So maybe it was his hits. Um, but then I've either also way. got a lot of spells on my unit. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was it was going all right. Well, actually, it's three. I, I ups, suspect it? it's definitely it's definitely his armor because definitely his armor. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. Mm. There you go. So yeah, we will 
we'll see. But um, yeah, a lot of ones and twos is, is never great, really. Um, the Toruk are dead, as so the everyone work. suspected they would be. Um, everyone suspected that that would be everyone the case. Everyone knew. Yeah, um, and now it's just a matter of the trolls working out what to do about it. Um, in the middle combat, um, so I charged in. Uh, so we've missed a turn in terms of pictures. Um, this is the follow-up where he charges the Titan in. Um, but effectively, I do a whole load of wounds in the first combat. And so then he has to charge in the Titan. And I continue doing wounds. Um, I think he was failing to do any wounds to my veteran alt marauders. Mm. Um, in the first one, and I have a feeling that Gromgor is in a challenge with his BSB, and I th I think to myself that's not anything scary, and then of course that whole breath weapon AP10, not breath weapon, yeah. the AP10 thing, is actually a problem for Gromgor because he's only five up ward save, uh, Aegis save, so yeah, um, it is actually something that I should have been a bit more careful about because Gromgor's actually getting quite lucky not to be killed by it, because um, two up armor is is no good if you don't get to take it. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, over here, um, did he fail a charge? No, I think this is just demonstrating that the Lugas come up and they can turn the claim the objective on turn six, um, basically. Um, and then so he's forward. just hoping the ferals die so that you don't have an objective. Yes, exactly, sure. exactly that. And uh, I won't be able to charge and kill the Luga. So speaking of which. Speaking of ferals dying, yes. Um, in spite of having three spells still up, uh, this time his armor does hold. You can see he only lost one model mm. to my AP not. Um, I think Awaken the Beast was on resilience, not on strength for AP one, because um, I was just trying to it keep my sense, ferals yeah. alive, you know, um, rather than anything. Um, but the numbers are very much going his way in terms of combat res and wounds at this point, and so my ferals are no. Longer holding the objective there. Um, oh, is this the last picture? Oh, I am a little slack in that regard. Um, so, yeah, apologies, folks. Um, I got excited for the rest of the battle. Um, I know that we were very much speeding up time, um, so I will talk you through it. Um, the one thing in that a I think... very inception y kind of way. Yeah. Um... <laughs> so this just keeps spinning. <laughs> <laughs> nice, that was handy. You always have the props on hand. Um, yeah, I think um, in this one, what happened? Oh, what was it that happened with the trolls? Oh, Did yes, the trolls I know what it was. Fail a charge? No, 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 they didn't. No, this was my stupid running out of time idiot error. You see where the trolls are now in the fact that they're pointing towards the left center. I just turned them after killing the Torah anointed and didn't think anything through about where they were facing. And when his Citadel guard ran after the ferals, they ran out of line of sight of the trolls. Right. Sure. And that's just so stupid on my part. Literally, trolls being stupid, me being stupid, because um, <laughs> the trolls don't have it anymore. Um, because I basically missed out on the charge, on the flank charge on that unit. And even though trolls aren't that killy, they're still probably going to do a decent amount of damage in the flank to a unit of Citadel yeah. Guard. And it's a, it's a lot better than just letting Citadel Guard survive and live. Um, so that was annoying in that respect. And that pretty much ends the flank of points killed. And yeah, obviously sure. I do lose the objective because of it, because the ferals are gone. Um, and then without being able to say a picture, maybe go back to the previous picture of the middle combat, just to remind folks how it was at the last time we had a picture of it. Um, uh, so, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Um, Gromgor had taken one wound in the challenge, um, but it was going my way in terms of the models that are being killed because he hasn't actually got that many Infernal Guard left in that unit now. Yeah, um, It's sure. basically just a, a BSB, the seat of authority guy at the back, um, which is on the 40 millimeter base. Um uh, and the Kadeem Titan coming in. But amazingly, uh, well, I don't know if amazingly, I mean, you haven't seen a picture and I don't think you've really heard from me. How do you think this combat in the middle ends up? I mean, your guy is pretty good. Again, He's pretty I, good. I, yeah, so I think I think you killed this BSB, you, but the sounds of it, you got very lucky with your, with the, uh, what's it called? Metal shifting. I think yes. it is. And mm -hmm. because of that, you 
pounced and killed him and killed the unit and they ran pretty much pretty much exactly that yeah i did um and the kadim's titan being supernal um died because of the wounds that i was doing sure doing, um effectively big um, point swing then big point swing in that regard yeah um and um did he end chariots. up getting your unit your veteran uh, i think the veteran or marauders went down so he got okay. the unit um didn't get gromdor um and um and my chariots basically pursued and got his unit which was his bsb and his general um yeah. so a big point swing in the center in the end for me and I think, yeah, Martin was definitely feeling a little bit of the hurt in that respect mm, because it was sure. quite a big swing. Over here, um, you can go back to the Ferals, actually, because um, the Feral Marauders, that is, because something was still to play out. Basically, I charged the Feral Marauders into his one wound remaining Kadeem Titan, thinking to myself, I need points to make up for the fact that I've lost the objective. Um, so I, yeah. I do... I think you've gone past it. Was it. Ages ago. Um, it was ages ago. Yeah, yeah. It's popped up a few <laughs> times, but it's all good. Um, yeah, there was one wound on the Kadeem Titan left and my Feral Marauders charge into it and kill, do the final wound on that um, Kadeem Titan. You're just uh, taking us back through the battle now. <laughs> That's the one. I mean, I, uh, yeah, I can see it now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I do actually manage to kill the Kadeem Titan and overrun past the Lugas, which meant that the Feral Marauders actually survived as well. So it was a real topsy-turvy end to the battle in the he killed my ferals and stopped me winning the objective. I messed up my troll flank charge, so couldn't kill his unit in return. But then in the center, I just killed everything and the feral marauders killed the Kadeem Titan. So I ended yeah. up killing two Kadeem Titans, his BSB, his general, um, the Bastion and the Infernal Warriors. Lots of death on that last in, turn. In exchange for him, for me losing the objective, which... You know, probably goes my way in terms of points. But it definitely goes my way. Because <laughs> I know you're eager to press the button. Always. Yeah. Uh, a lot of points was gained in those last lo last few combats. Um, you know, loads of points. Like, seriously. <laughs> loads of points. And in, I only lost the veteran orders in, in, in return. Um, I mean, the, the story of the slaves killing the Ionot Chariot is pretty hilarious in the middle of that as well. Yeah, it was really a great is. fun battle. Um, Martin did have some really woeful dice it has to be said and, it, and he took it on the chin um, but because of getting the objective it, it wasn't as bad as it could have been um, so I think a 12-8 you know was was a fair result for someone who had bad luck does that make sense? I mean obviously without the bad luck he probably deserved a bit more but considering the dice just fell a bit like they did and I didn't really feel like I made too many mistakes Um so I was delighted to get 12 points, obviously, because that puts me on a mighty 13 now. Uh, yeah. For the tour. Um, so I've kind of bounced back a little bit, um, but still some work to be done for the Orcs. And unfortunately, Marcin will have to wait a little bit longer to get his... And that revenge. Uh, yeah, the revenge best served extra, well, extra cold. Maybe you can put on the comments uh, about how he's mm. so... Uh, going to get that revenge. Or maybe, you know... Uh, after getting the objective, he might go on Twitter, Facebook, or Patreon uh, in maybe, order to maybe. voice his concerns uh, or anything. Yes. And of course, uh, the Ninth Age forum where we are yes. at uh, as You're well, at and, and finding mm. all that. So uh, yeah, go check us all out on that. Um, mm -hmm. Like, share, subscribe, uh, comment to Martin's comments. I'm sure he's going <laughs> to be comment commenting. Comment if I'm you can comment within a comment. You can. You just reply. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, and join us for round three because that's coming up. Uh, you're sitting on. Are you like dead in the middle now, or are you slightly? Uh, no. Uh, you drew with that. Yes, you? I've got um, eleven and um, eleven and nine. So yes. No. Yes. Yeah, no, or something like that. You're pretty I'm even, yeah, Stevens. I'm average. Middle. Yeah. And I'm still trying to claw back a very terrible start. So there you go. But yeah, round three will come us very soon, just yeah. like the dice gods. Can we do <laughs> it? Can we claw back or stay average? That's, <laughs> stay tuned. That's, how, that's PTG's aiming point, <laughs> yeah. isn't it, really? It's never, it'll never exceed, just mm. somewhere in the middle or below. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Cheers for watching, folks. Yeah, thank yeah. you. And, and until next time, on that cliffhanger, <laughs> see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Woo.